The president's remarks did cause consternation in Sweden, which normally only gets global attention for IKEA and pop music. And it's nice people. For more on the Swedish reaction, we're joined by Anne Sophie Naslund. She's U.S. correspondent for Expressen, that's a Swedish newspaper, and we bet a good one. Thanks all for joining us. Thank you so much for having so, me. So, I've seen a lot of speculation today as to what people in Sweden think. And my question is, I don't really know how you could get to the truth of that. Because in Sweden, as we were just talking about a minute ago, you can be punished, you can be imprisoned for giving an unpopular opinion. So in a, in a society that practices censorship like that, are people free to really say what they think? I mean, you, you talked about the Peter Springer, uh, Springer, the one, one of the guys. The, the policeman. Yeah, that's the exactly right. Yeah, that, that posted something on on, on Facebook. Right. But you know that that cause, uh, case was was dropped straight away, so he's not in, under investigation anymore. And but he was though. He was for a little while, but then you know because someone because someone um, reported on him, but it, it was it was dropped. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and I'm I'm glad he's free tonight. But he's a cop who said, look, uh, the majority of the crimes I investigate are committed by immigrants. And he was investigated by your government for a crime. I mean, that's got to have a chilling effect, to put it mildly, on people's willingness to say what they really think, no? But I think when, when you're talking about people, go, people going to prison for, for, for talking about these issues, as far as I know, that's only been uh, nazists. Um, been what? Uh, nazists. Uh, bad people. Uh, oh, sorry, the, um, like uh, um, neo-nazists. And, and Bjorn, Bjornquist? Well, I mean, there are probably people whose opinions I don't agree with, but there are people, and you probably might not either, but there are still people expressing their political opinions who've gone to prison for those opinions. And that's just foreign to us here, but it, it has an effect on what people are willing to say in public, don't you think? I mean, there, ha there has been a, a discussion about what you can say in public, as, as you know, people are talking about here, what, you, what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to say and, 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 and things like that. But, but I mean, obviously, he, he posted this on Facebook and, and all the media reported about it. And it's not like, you know, you, 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 and, and nothing is going to happen to him. So, so, you know, that's... Well, but as a journalist, you can't be in favor of that, can you? I mean, people should be allowed to say what they think, shouldn't they? Of course. And there, people are... Um, reading about it in the media now, and people are discussing it, and uh, you know, it, it's all out there. It's not that. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, so there's a book called Mass Challenge, which is written by this Kurdish economist, and I think it's one of the biggest selling books uh, in Sweden. The Carroll Library in Stockholm, which is a real library, I looked it up, refused to put this book on the racks because, and I'm quoting now the librarian, library collections ought to be characterized by diversity and pluralism. You're basically just saying we're not going to let people read the book because we disagree with it. I, I don't know about why and, and if that's true that they, the, right. they don't have that book, sorry. Do, but do you think, I, just, I mean, you're from Sweden, mm -hmm. you've been here four years, so you can tell the difference between the two cultures. If I were, were at a party of educated people and said, you know, immigrants are committing a lot of crimes, so they're much more likely to commit crime than a Swedish-born person, which is true, by the way. How, how would that go over? Would people say, that's true, or what, you know, what are the statistics, or would they say, how dare you say that? I mean, in, right now, the situation in, in Sweden is that the, the crime rate is actually yes. decreasing. And okay. there are some numbers that are raising, like uh, the gun violence, for example. But it's, as far as we know, and what, what, what studies show so far, is that that is, has to do with, with people coming in from uh, uh, the EU, EU, the European Union. It has, as far as we know, what, what, what it looks like, that has nothing to do with, with, uh, uh, with the refugees coming in. So, so you know, that, that really doesn't really have to do with... Well, with I don't know. I mean, so here's the Swedish National Council. I'm not making this up. BRA, it's what Ami was just saying. According to their stats, rape was up 13% last year, 2016. That's a big rise. Overall crimes were up in 2016, 6.5%. That's one and a half million crimes. That's a lot of crimes. Well, that I don't know exactly where you got those numbers from. From the Swedish National Council. Yeah. Okay. The, the numbers that we've been looking at, and I mean, I'm, I'm not here to to defend, no, no, I just, to defend yeah. Sweden or anything. I'm a news I like reporter. Sweden. I'm not against yeah, Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, I'm I'm a news reporter. But yeah. but if you look at the at the overall numbers and what has been going on for in a long term, the the numbers are definitely going uh, down. It's decreasing. But uh, and and actually, one of the crimes that has been decreased the most last during last. Yeah, that was that was rape. But uh, also, if you look at rape in a in a wider um, historical perspective, or, or like 10 years or 15 years, there are some periods of time when it's gone up because the the um, uh, how you the definition of rape and sexual assault in Sweden has been wider. So more more. Um, more incidents are now considering being rape and sexual assault. So that could be one of the reasons, if you look at your numbers, I'm right. not sure exactly what numbers you are, but that could be one of the reasons why it's now looked like 
looks like it's been more of them when it's, when it's actually because just the definition. Weird. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that, may be, that may be true. Just to, again, these are government numbers from Sweden. This is not something that I cooked up in my office backstage. Um, but the overall crime rate, they said in 2016, 1.5 million more crimes than the year before. But look, I mean, the numbers are pretty clear. The Sweden stopped keeping crime stats based on national origin in 2001 because they were embarrassing. But when they did keep them, they showed, well, why else would they not keep them, that foreign-born men were far more likely, four or five times more likely to commit violent crimes, sex crimes, than Swedish-born men. I'm not saying they're all bad, but that's like a real thing. Are people allowed to say that there? In 2015, the, the police started to put a, a special code for, uh -huh. for crimes that was related to uh, this, uh, a lot of people coming in as, as a refugees. Right, to the new wave yeah. of refugees. And, yeah. and uh, what we've seen so far, I mean, this has just been a short time. Right. Uh, it's just 1% of the, of the reported crimes that has anything to do with refugees. With those refugees. Yeah. So it, it's not like it's been, um, um, I mean, this, you, I've heard you talking about this on your show, that it's been a crime wave or a rape wave. That, that is not what, what, what we see in, in Sweden or the numbers that are reported in Sweden. Actually, was, as, as I mentioned, it was 1% in that. In that study. For those refugees. But again, 13% crime spike in rapes, that's a lot. I mean, you could say, well, the definition is broadened, okay, but it's presumably there's still real rapes. But, but also, another, another um, side of that is when they ask women if they have ever been sexually assaulted or raped, yeah. the num that number actually uh, rises a little bit. And, and one of the reasons for that was that maybe that was things that happened way, you know, many, many years ago. And now they realize, oh, hang on, that maybe was a rape. And now they, they're saying, yeah, that, that happened to me. But the numbers, uh, women reporting rape and sexual assault, that has not gone up. Okay. I'm not sure I fully understand, uh, but I appreciate the perspective. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, President Trump's comments have put Swedish crime stats under the microscope, as you have you just seen. A lot of outlets have scrambled for some reason to rebut the notion that there's been a crime wave in Sweden. Vox asserts that concerns about migrant crime reflects, and I'm quoting now, a long history of sexual panics in the West about non-white immigrants. Is it that simple, though? Is concern about immigration in Sweden really just about white racism? Well, until last month, Zita Raji was the U.S. ambassador to Sweden, and she joins us now for some perspective. Ambassador, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks so much for having me, Tucker. So uh, it, it seems uh, we've just been talking about what the actual crime numbers are, and I don't know if we're really going to get to the truth of it, but it seems does seem clear to me that there is legitimate concern about it in Sweden, whether or not the average person feels free to express that. And one of the ways we know that is because the government itself said recently, wow, you know, too many people are coming into this country, and there's a social cost to this. If the wave of refugees and immigrants wasn't a problem, why would they throw, slow it down as they have? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Uh, Tucker, you know, I, I'm here for two reasons. One is that I think f um, facts matter. Fact, uh, people ma make decisions based on what they believe to be true, and those decisions have consequences. Now more than ever when there is so much misinformation, and we have a president that uh, uh, takes advantage of a wide range of uh, resources, and you should be privileged to be one of them, uh, in uh, giving him information to make important policy decisions for our country. So it's really important, and, and I appreciate the opportunity to have this dialogue with you. Um, I saw your show earlier, and I thought it was great when you talked about uh, that we need to move uh, beyond, let's say, that you mentioned the personality of the president or the tweets, and we need to talk about the core issues, and we need to figure out how to have a lot of people come here and how to have them invested in our country. I, I thought exactly. those were really great questions. So um, I think that, you know, what's really interesting to me, you had some great guests and the Swedish uh, journalists that you had. I think she got in the details of these statistics enough that I, that I really want to say I can certainly get into the weeds on this with you. For the last two years, I've been steeped in this very much. I've seen uh, statistics and reports and, um, and numbers, and um, I would just point out that uh, none of what I have seen uh, backs up the claims that Mr. Horowitz uh, has made in, in the interview that he had with you, and I watched it twice, and I tried to listen for specific evidence uh, or sources that he would state, and I didn't hear that. Perhaps I missed it, but it seemed to me that well, it no, was I don't, more I don't anecdotal. Think you, I don't think you did. No, actually, he gave statistics from the Swedish National Council, which I think is part of the Ministry of Justice there. Unless Not I'm this one. I'm it. talking about the earlier. I'm talking about okay, the but, earlier but, but interviews from which the president... just that suggested that there's been an absolute rise in reported right. crimes, in arrests, and these rape right. stats are real. And I know people said, well, that's because somehow the women are including rapes from before. 
Okay, maybe that's true. I'm not an expert in Swedish crime stats, but the well, overall crimes you, you know, have gone up 1.5 million in a year. Well, I don't think it's for me to talk. You know, I think we can sit here and talk about Swedish rape stats. And if, as your guest just pointed out, I think that one of the reasons, and I'm not an expert on Swedish rape stats, but I do know that a lot of the statistics and the crime rate has not skyrocketed, has, that has, as has been claimed. Okay. And one of the reasons, among many, that the, those rape stats may be high, again, I'm not an authority on that, is because it's Sweden encourages um, people to okay. come forward. Okay, but, but it's let not me just, move on from on, that for on. a minute. Sorry, you because just I said think that, that I'm, no, I'm sorry, Ambassador. I don't want you to filibuster. You just said that facts matter, and so I just threw out that the crime, yes. the overall crime rate has gone up 1.5 million crimes in a year. Now, maybe that has nothing to do with the refugees flooding into the country, but the truth remains that the government, the prime minister, have said point blank, it's just too many people. We can't handle it. And so I wonder okay, why it's so good. controversial That's for Americans question. to note yeah. that this is a problem when the Swedish government itself is it. saying that. Absolutely. So you nailed this right now. So that's what I want to get to, because why it's really interesting to me that for the last two days we've been talking about Sweden. And we're talking about this, and I think what the real conversation is, what we're really saying, this is a conversation about security, it's about fear, and it's about misunderstanding, and it's about us. And we are talking about Sweden, because what we're really talking about is, could this happen to us? And I can tell you that Sweden ha takes care. Of, Sweden is a wonderful country. It's, it's. I can go on about it. Ranks highest okay, in no, I, industrial I combination. All okay. that. Okay. And they have their challenges, and they, they have taken a lot of people, and they're dealing with the challenges. But that does not mean that that is somehow related to migrants. When you take so many people, you know, we're never going to be Sweden. Sweden has taken about 200,000 people. Hold on. Over the last three years, proportion to our population, if we were to take that many people, we would have taken six to seven million okay, refugees but, okay, in this I country. Get it, but hold on. We, is, that I'm, getting, model I'm, I'm running out of patience a tiny bit, the, Ambassador, the, because the you're not getting to the, the core of how it here, is this which is... Gonna, what, what does this look, have to do with us, is what I'm it saying. Has to do Even with if us what everybody's saying, that the sensationalism is okay. true, about Sweden, uh, crime, here's why it has to do with us, because the what? left in Sweden and the United States has exactly the same response, which is anybody who has any qualm about this, A, better shut up. In Sweden, you can face prosecution. Or B, is simply just a racist. You're a bigot if you don't like it. And my point is, there are real reasons not to like it. You don't have to be a bigot not to like it. There are social costs and economic costs to this. And nobody on the left wants to admit it. And I don't know why. It's very patronizing and it's very annoying to have well, to lie again, would, in order to meet I some standards. I would standard. address that. Again, when Mr. Horowitz was having that interview with you initially, he was saying, well, many people are saying this, or I went to some swanky party and people were yelling at me. Let me tell you one thing. That actually made me crack up a little bit. That is suspicious to me. Swedes don't yell, particularly in swanky parties. Uh, the, the, so uh, I don't know I'm where he's getting time, his information. I'll, I'll answer this. The Sweden Democrat, the, the, the party that was considered so right wing and fringe 10 years ago is now vying for second place. Its support has doubled but Tucker, in the past two my years. Point Why to you is, is that? You want to talk about core issue. This is another country. We're talking about the politics and the demographics and the challenges of another country. Why are we talking about any other country? Why are we talking about Sweden? We what can talk about France. We all, can talk about Germany or Belgium or Great Britain. Could, I mean, it's all of a piece. To what obviously. End? You know, it's obvious when I was in Sweden, it's a template for what's happening here. That's why, as okay, you all know, and, that's and most what I'm voters trying to do. Say. Well, that's what I started out by saying. Let's talk about the core issues. We're talking about this because we think it has something to do with us. Okay, I'm it sorry. I'm, we are out of time, and I wish we'd gotten more to the points here, Ambassador, but I appreciate your expertise in coming on tonight. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you.